Hello, Screamer, and welcome to Scream Stream, your spoiler-free guide to streaming horror entertainment. I'm your host, James Gass. If you're new to the show, what I do is pick a horror movie from one of the various streaming services and give it a spoiler-free review. Scream Stream is available wherever podcasts are served, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and many more. If you'd like to support the show, uh, and this show is listener-supported, Head over to patreon.com slash screamstream, sign up for a monthly donation of however much you want, and, um, and yeah, support the show because I would greatly appreciate it. You have no idea. Uh, also, if you want to support the show, there's another way you can do that. You can buy merch from the T Public store, and that's over at tpublic.com slash stores slash scream dash stream. And basically, I have a storefront there with all kinds of different uh, horror-related T-shirts from different indie artists, and I even have a Scream Stream shirt there. So uh, that's another way that you can support the show. And again, I would really appreciate it. So this week I'm going to review uh, In the Mouth of Madness, and I'm going to do this a little differently. Uh, I've tried recording this episode a few times now, and it just hasn't worked out. And I think it's because these reviews seem to have gotten kind of clinical uh, in in, or maybe not clinical, but formulaic. So I do the review. I say who was written, directed by, star, synopsis, and then I break it down into um, acting, character development sometimes, story, cinematography, and then say whether it's good or not. And it seems like I've just kind of repeated this process over and over and over. I think maybe it's gotten a little formulaic. And maybe a little boring. So I'm, I'm going to do this a little differently, a little uh, by the seat of my pants, I guess you could say. I don't know. So let, let's get into the review. So in the mouth of madness, I want to do a classic film. And I wanted originally to do one from the 80s. And I couldn't really find one that I just was in the mood to watch. Uh, however, uh, this past weekend, we did watch one from the 80s. And maybe I'll do a review of that later on. Or maybe I'll do it for the Patreon for the, yeah, the Patreon page. I don't know. Oh, and that was a uh, maximum overdrive. I kind of do, I kind of do want to uh, review that film, but in the mouth of madness was from 1994. And this was written by Michael DeLuca was directed by John Carpenter star, Sam Neill, Jurgen Pronchnow, Prochnow, Prochnow, I don't know. And Julie Carmen. And for the brief plot synopsis, an insurance investigator begins discovering that the impact a horror writer's books have on his fans is more than inspirational. So the film starts off. Now, I, I full disclaimer, I've seen this film a few times in the past, uh, but I don't remember a whole lot about it. So the film starts off with Sam Neill, uh, who's actually a really good horror actor. He's been in several of, of my favorite horror films. Uh, event horizon. But anyway, Sam, Sam Neill's character, John Trent, uh, who is this insurance agent, uh, gets dragged into this mental ward and says he's not crazy and they're all coming and bad things are going to happen. And then, uh, later, uh, David Warner, uh, Dr. Wren sees him and he kind of tells him this story. And so we kind of go into a flashback of Sutter Kane has kind of just like disappeared and he's supposed to have this new book out and Sutter Kane is this prolific writer and people get way too into his books. And it's almost like, like they, he invades their minds and makes them go crazy. And of course, John Trent doesn't believe any of this and he just thinks it's a, a, a scam or a PR stunt. So he goes to find this Sutter Kane and uh, Linda, uh, his publicist, she comes along and uh, they're looking for this town called Hobbs. I think it's Hobbs End. And th this is a fictional town, but theoretically it's based on an actual place. And so they kind of, f they find the town of Hobbs End and weird stuff starts to happen. And she starts to notice characters from the book in real life. And it kind of goes from there. Now, this was filmed, you know, in the 90s when we had classic cinematography that wasn't shaky. Everything, it looked like everything was either steady cam or on sticks. 
Uh, and I kind of miss that. You don't really, you never really notice how many films these days you shake your can until you look back at some of these older films and you think, wow, it's, you really notice this stuff now. Uh, and I, I, I kind of really just hate shaky cam. I thought it was, it was fine in indie films and it's kind of gotten old. So I appreciated that they used sticks and dollies and steady cams, uh, to shoot films back in the day. But the use of color and the cinematography was nice. Uh, some of the camera angles were really cool. Uh, this was when they really used cinematography to create tension and to make you feel uncomfortable as you watch the film. And I, I think, I don't remember who was, who the, uh, the DP was on this, uh, but he did an amazing job. Uh, and John Carpenter, you know, he's a really good director. Not all of his films are great, but he's still a really good director. He, he pulls a lot of, of talent out of his actors. Uh, he pulls a lot of emotion, I guess, out of, out of his actors. And for this one, uh, I thought he did a good job. I didn't find it scary. It wasn't a scary film. It was pretty creepy, though. There's a lot of creepy moments. There, uh, the whole, the makeup was really good, and that created a really nice creepy vibe. I like the makeup. I like the practical effects. Uh, there's not really a lot of CGI and they didn't really have CGI back. Then. I don't know how they did this. I think they did a lot of animation, um, with, with visual effects. Uh, the special effects were great. I love the makeup. Um, the story was a little, I don't want to say convoluted, but it, it, I think the story kind of tried to do a little bit too much, uh, but it was still pretty good. I still enjoyed the story. I thought it had a nice sort of play on H.P. Lovecraft. And I have to say, I like stuff in the style of H.P. Lovecraft better than I like H.P. Lovecraft. I, I know I'm, I might get some hate messages for that, but it's true. I just, I don't really like Lovecraft's stories or stories written by Lovecraft. But stuff based on that and set kind of in that similar universe or, or loosely based on some of this stuff or in that style. I love it. And I thought John Carpenter did a really great job taking some of that Lovecraftian influence and creating a really nice story. Uh, even though it was a little, a little wibbly wobbly here and there, it was still really entertaining. I liked this movie a lot. Uh, I thought it was really good. It currently has a, uh, a 7.2 on, on IMDb. I have to say it, that's, that's, I would probably give this like a, like a four and a half out of five. I liked it that much. I thought there, like I said, some flaws with the story, uh, but overall the acting is great. I love Sam Neill. I love his characters. Every time he plays a character, he does a really good job. Uh, Linda, Linda, or uh, the Julie Carmen, what she did with Linda was nice. The way Linda turned into this weird sort of, character. Uh, I like the way that she was able to transition into that very nicely. It wasn't just like this abrupt thing um, that happened to her. I think she pulled it off really well. I think Jürgen Prochnow, Pr 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 he played Sutter Kane. I thought he did a great job. He wasn't in the film a whole lot, but the moments he was there, he was like, man, he had this presence that was unbelievable. Uh, I don't recognize him from a whole lot of other stuff, but man, he was good. Uh, one person I did recognize was Wilhelm von Holmberg. He played the character of Simon, one of the farmer, I guess a farmer or, or little citizen of, of Hobbs end. He, you'll recognize him. He was in Ghostbusters two as Vigo. Uh, he made an appearance in this again. I just, I thought it was good. Um, this is available on shutter. Yeah, it's on shutter. I don't think it's on Amazon Prime, but it's also on Shutter. I do recommend that you watch it if you haven't seen this one yet. Uh, and this is actually part three of, of John Carpenter's unofficial apocalypse trilogy. Uh, the first one being The Thing, uh, number two being uh, Prince of Darkness, and then we have this one in the mouth of madness. And they all sort of dealt with this theme of, or this, this apocalyptic theme of some kind of creature or evil coming to the surface and taking over. 
So the film was good. I, I liked it. I'd recommend that you go in and uh, check it out. So a couple other films that I do want to talk about um, just real briefly that we watched this weekend. Uh, my wife had never seen Event Horizon. This is one of my favorite sci-fi horror films. Uh, again, starring Sam Neill, but then we also have Lawrence Fishburne uh, and a few others. I loved Event Horizon. Oh, Jack, Nor- Jack knows where this, right? He was in it. I love Event Horizon. I thought it's another one of those great uh, H.P. Lovecraft inspired stories, but this time in space. And sometimes when you take horror and put it in space, it doesn't really work well. For example, Hellraiser Bloodline, Hellraiser in space. I, it just didn't work that well. This did. And she, I don't know how she had never seen Event Horizon because she loves sci-fi. Not the hugest fan of horror, but she does love sci-fi. Uh, so we watched it. She didn't really like it. I was surprised. How do you not like Event Horizon? I guess not everybody does. Do you like Event Horizon? Let me know. Oh, that was great. And then we watched Maximum Overdrive. And this was one of the, my favorite films from when I was a kid. Uh, I think so. We had just gotten pay per view when I saw this. Like pay per view had just come out. Um, it was like this brand new thing. And, uh, we had just got it and this is back in like 80, I want to say like 84, 85, maybe. And I remember one day my mom was at work and I wanted to watch overboard. So I called and asked for the code cause you had to, they give you a box and you had to punch in a code on the remote to order a movie. So I wanted to watch overboard and I asked her for the code and she gave it to me. And that month, I ended up charging like $75 worth of movies. And in the 80s, $75 was a lot of money. And I think I watched Maximum Overdrive like three times at least. Uh, and then I also watched Wes Craven's Deadly Friend. And then I watched Nightmare on Elm Street. And I watched Fatal Attraction. Actually, I didn't watch Fatal Attraction. I rented it once, started watching it, and went to bed because I thought it was stupid. And then I forgot that I written it, rented, rented it. And so I rented it again. And then still didn't watch it. And I had, re- I had rented like so many movies. I was in so much trouble that month. Um, but yeah, at Maximum Overdrive, I, re- I watched it like three times on pay-per-view and just absolutely loved it. The scene with the cook machine was like one of my, my, it was like the scene that scared me the most because you had the cook machine and then you had the steamroller. Two of like the worst, like, deaths in that movie. Like Stephen King has this way of taking everyday objects and turning them into terrifying things. And he did a really good job with, with maximum overdrive. And you know, that movie gets a lot of hate. Um, I loved it. It's still one of my favorites. We watched it. It still holds up. Well, it's still a fun movie. It's, it's still just a really good time. If you haven't seen maximum overdrive, you know what? Probably the only way you haven't seen that is if you're one of the younger generations getting into horror. That's like a classic. That's much, that's like required reading, I guess. Required watching for, for any horror fan. Check it out. That one is available on Hulu. So if you don't have Hulu, I would recommend get Hulu for the reason of, uh, this is something else we've been watching. Um, Castle Rock. Uh, I, I want to talk a little bit about this because I, I want to do a full review when the season is over. But if you don't have Hulu and you need a reason, that reason is Castle Rock. This show is so good. Uh, I think we're we're on episode five. I think it just came out five five. Yeah, and they're not doing they they didn't release all the episodes at once. They're doing every Wednesday. Uh, Castle Rock, man, that is like the number one reason to get Hulu. If only you get Hulu to watch this show and then cancel it. Um, but Castle Rock is, is absolutely, it's amazing. It's, it's such a great show. Um, yeah, it's probably like my top, top five shows. All right. So that's all I want to, I really want to talk about. I'm starting to ramble. So let's get into the new releases. Uh, on Netflix, we have a few. We have uh, the Diabolical, which looks okay. Uh, the Chernobyl Diaries, which I did watch uh, last weekend before last. You know, I, th- I remember watching this, and I, for some reason I thought it was a found footage film, so I watched it again. 
because I was looking for found footage. I love found footage. I don't know why, but it it just appeals to me, okay? Don't hate. And it's not. It's not a found footage film, but the cinematography is kind of in that fashion. You almost think it is a found footage film. I love the way they filmed it. It was great, and I love the story. If you haven't seen that one, I do recommend it. It's on Netflix. Um, Dreamcatcher, another really good film from Stephen King. Uh, kind of long, but it was good. And then The Strangers. We rented The Strangers on Amazon because I wanted a uh, wife to see it. And then now it's on, um, it's on Netflix. So there you go. Uh, and then moving on to Amazon, we have a few things here. Deep Star Six, another really good film from when I was younger. I rented this at the movie, at the movie store. Um, absolutely love this one. It's so good. It's, it's, it, this was in those times when we had, um, it was deep sea horror. We had deep star six Leviathan. Um, what was the, the other, the other really big one with, um, uh, Mary, was it Mary Stewart Masterson and, um, Oh, what was that movie? Ed Harris was in it. Hang on. Give me, give me one second. We'll look this up. I know you're probably screaming at the, at, at the radio right now. It's like, right. Oh, the abyss. <laughs> Yes, it is. Um, so yeah, it was when we had horror movies that took place under the sea, uh, deep rise, I think deep rising was right around that time or just on the tail end of that whole trend. Um, but yeah, deep star six was really good. If you haven't seen that, check it out. Uh, stir of echoes, uh, they wait the forsaken, which was a vampire movie, kind of like an alternative vampire movie. Uh, it was interesting. I, I liked it. I, I thought it was pretty good. And then we also have daylight, the, the Satanic Rites of Dracula, The City of the Dead from 1960, and that's all for, for uh, Amazon. And then on Shudder, there is a lot of stuff on Shudder. So let's start with uh, Boy Eats Girl, which is kind of like a horror comedy, uh, In the Mouth of Madness, The Substitute, Anaconda, The Hostage, See No Evil 1 and 2, The Neighbor, the Grave Dancers, uh, Blood and Donuts, which I've always wanted to watch this, just based on the cover. Uh, Dread, Hidden, not The Hidden, with Kyle MacLachlan. I love that movie. I, I rented that one, too, when, I, when it was on pay-per-view that month. Uh, it was really good. <laughs> uh, Hidden, The Blair Witch Project 1 and 2, uh, The Book of Shadows. You know, I actually liked that one. A lot of people didn't. It got a lot of hate. Uh, because I, I guess it wasn't, you know, it wasn't found footage and it kind of didn't really go along with the, well, it did, didn't, it didn't. Uh, but that one got a lot of hate. I like that one a lot. Uh, then we also have Ruin Me, Channel Zero Season 1, about time. Uh, I can't wait to see Season 2 because I had, we had Sci-Fi Channel on Sling and then Sling turned into complete garbage. And so I didn't get to finish Season 2, um, but they're up to like Season 3 now, I think. Uh, Channel, uh, Channel Zero Season 1 is on there. Uh, we Are Not Cats, The Road Movie, The Chamber, uh, Caught. I don't know what that is. Uh, and that's it. Quite a few things on on um, Shudder. And that's it. That's all we got. Oh, I, I guess I don't. I didn't mention like the Billy Bob. Uh, uh, was it Billy Billy Bob Briggs? Billy Joe Bob Briggs. So Joe brought, uh, they also did like a whole sort of marathon thing with Joe Bob Briggs. Uh, he was a horror host, hosted a bunch of horror movies on TV back in the day when they did that sort of thing. Uh, Captain USA was my favorite. And then we had, you know, you had, um, uh, Up All Night with Rhonda, what's her face? And then Joe Bob Briggs did his, um, I think he did, I think it was like Monster Vision or something. Uh, but yeah, they did like a whole thing with him. And I think he's coming back for another one. Uh, so check out all those films. Uh, yeah, a lot of good stuff on Shutter. So there you go. That's all the new stuff I have for you. And I think that's actually going to wrap up this week's episode of ScreamStream. Uh, that's going to do it. If you'd like to keep up with me outside of the podcast, you can follow me on Twitter, uh, Scream underscore stream. You can check out the website, ScreamPod.com, where you can actually listen to the podcast. And subscribe to it in uh, Apple Podcasts and Spotify and Google Podcasts and wherever you want to listen to podcasts. All the links there are, are there. You can follow me on Instagram. I'm trying to use that a little bit more. And that is uh, Instagram.com slash Scream 
stream. And then also uh, go and like the Facebook page. That's over at facebook.com slash screenpod, I believe. Yeah, facebook.com slash screenpod. I am posting over there quite a bit. Um, that and Twitter are like my two main things. Um, if you don't do the Facebook, do the Twitter because I, I kind of cross post uh, between those two accounts. Uh, so pick your poison. And then the, the Instagram, I'm going to try to do a little bit more of that. I think for next week, I do want to talk about, uh, I think I might review, um, uh, maximum overdrive. I'll probably also review creep show and creep show two, maybe kind of do like a, a Stephen King sort of, of thing. Uh, we'll do that next week. So if you haven't seen creep show and creep show two, those are available on shutter. Uh, and then also, uh, maximum overdrive is on Hulu. So yeah, uh, go check those out and I'll do a review next week because I don't know of anything else I really wanted to, to check out. I think next week we are going to go try to go to the movies and see The Meg. I know it's gotten bad ratings, but I want to see it. I've been wanting to see this since Eli Roth first announced, announced it on Twitter. Um, I think it was like maybe a year or so ago, two years ago now. So I've been excited to see The Meg. I still think the title change is stupid. They should have just kept it at Meg to personalize the shark and, and add I think when you personalize something like that it makes it a little more scary that's what they should have done but they didn't I don't know why but. so anyway until next week I'm James Gass saying if it was real the cameraman would be dead too good night